Hello, hello, hello. Hi, hello. guys. That, was that perfect? We are trying no countdown. Awesome. And just starting with the question being there. Um, but welcome to Leading Through Stories. With me today is Helen Rose, who's passionate about grief, Mary Michalithis, who's an educational leader, and of course me, Christy Wolf. And I am passionate about telling stories. I moved my mouse and I don't have my script. Oh, oh you can find it. We'll give you a second. Yay, yay. There you go. <laughs> for those of you joining us for the first time, please take a look at the show notes below. Um, that's where you'll find information about what Leading Through Stories is and why we started Leading Through Stories leading through stories. And then um, this is season two. This is the first episode of season two. We're trying something new. Every second time we meet once a month and every second time we are going to bring a guest on. So Helen, tell us about our guests. So, uh, so excited. This is our very first guest is our guest and my dear friend, Alexis McKeown. She's a Canadian photographer based in the Bow Valley and she specializes in studio work. She has a passion for showing her subjects their true beauty, and she does it perfectly. Uh, and for creating contemporary magazine style portraits for everyday people. Welcome, Alexis. We're so excited you're here. Hi, friends. I'm so excited Hi. to be here. I love all these lovely faces. <laughs> And we love yours, Alexis, as well. Today, we're going to be actually talking about Alexis. Um, and um, she's going to be really focusing on existing in photos. What does that mean? What does that look like? How does it feel? Um, and I'd like to take this opportunity. We had an opportunity to actually meet with Alexis way back in June. Uh, what date was that? Do you guys remember? I can't. It just seems that seems so long ago. But it was June. And was it not? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, I think so. Early summer. And, you know, as I think about the shoot initially when, you know, we discussed coming to visit with you, I thought, oh, my God, I I don't want to do no photo shoot. Like, I don't really <laughs> like the photos. Um, and initially, I was really anxious and nervous, Alexis. I don't know if I've told you this or not. But um, when we came to your studio, it was this incredible almost like I was walking into your amazing living room. Aww. It was welcoming. It was fresh. We had a lovely charcuterie board waiting for us. And of course, you know, Christy and Helen and I, you know, wanted to get some photos done for the work that we've been doing in Leading Through Stories. And not only was your work um, so inviting, your spirit I love your spirit. It's such a lovely, kind, and open spirit. You just <laughs> welcomed us all, and um, I just loved being there. So um, we want to say welcome, and um, and thank you for joining us today. We, we can't wait to hear what you have to share. Well, thanks so much for having me, and for all of those kind words. I'm already, like, blushing, so this is going to be interesting. <laughs> I'll just turn the eight shade of red by the end of this, probably. <laughs> Well, and I think too, like, Mary, that was your first time with Alexis. Helen and I have both done photos with Alexis. And um, I don't know about you, Helen, but my first one was her simplicity se session. And it was just a bit quicker. Um, but then that day that both of you came, I had booked her signature session. So she, I'd been there for like probably three hours already. We'd done hair and makeup, like we picked outfits out. And it was, uh, I don't know, I love the experience. I think everybody should do it. Yeah, I agree. Like the very first time um, I went in, I had no idea what what uh, to expect because I really don't like my picture being taken. And Alexis just makes you feel so comfortable. And I love that you get your hair done and your makeup done. And like you say, you get to choose your outfits. And it, the day, it's like a three or four hour session, but it doesn't, it just flies and it's wonderful. And she makes you feel so comfortable. Alexis, really, you have given me, I'm not so nervous about having my picture taken now. It's, uh, it's a great <laughs> gift that you have. It's more yeah. than just pointing a camera. Oh, I, I, I hope think, so. <laughs> yeah. And for me, Alexis, it was such, um, it was a conversation. I mean, you work with your subjects in such a, um, narrative way just very comfortable and you know talking with us and a little camera will go off it was just so natural I didn't I, you know the the nervousness and anxiety de depleted instantly and um, for those of you who are out there it really is like having a conversation with Alexis and her capturing your your movements your emotions um, through the lens as well 
Well, thanks so much for saying that. I, you know, I love having each and every one of you in front of my lens and then having all of you at the same time. So wonderful. Mary, I got to get you back on your own one day. Oh, God. <laughs> okay. I'm, re I'm ready. I'm ready. <laughs> I would like to see Mary do it with her daughters. Oh, yeah. yeah mother daughter sesh. Yeah. 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 That would be wonderful. Yeah. That well, thank you. Thanks for saying that about the conversation. I do. I have, you know, worked really hard to try and just forget about all of the photography part of it, actually, because the I didn't get into photography for the gear or the technical side of it. I got into it for the connection with people. I mean, that's what drew me to doing studio work and ending up where I am, sort of working one on one or, um, you know, very closely with people in the studio is because I like that conversation a lot. Like I, you know, I, I never get sick of it. And um, the photos are just, uh, just this beautiful bonus from that kind of connection in the studio. So thank you for noticing that and, and saying that. Yeah, and to add on to that, after you do your first photo session, what I love is that you don't share those photos until you've gone through the list of them. <laughs> You're very protective of that, which is good because you want to take the picture and that can cause a lot of anxiety. As soon as you take the picture, you want to look right away. But when you do the reveal session, I cried. How many people <laughs> cry, Alexis? Oh, it happens. Yeah, yeah people yeah. cry. I mean, not for not in bad ways. Let's do no. it. <laughs> like, oh my gosh, how can I be so beautiful? And I think that's uh, the whole point of today. It's like you just managed to pull it out because everybody has beauty about them. Oh yeah, and absolutely. You just managed to pull it out, and you're looking. You know, when I show people those photos. They're like, oh, who's that? <laughs> and it's like, it's me. <laughs> it's like, well, when was that taken? <laughs> May. <laughs> but yeah, you know I, think, I mean, I mean just... you look like that to me every day now, no Aww, matter what, no matter thanks, what thanks. makeup or hair or whatever. Thanks, I feel like that's yeah. just what you look like. But yeah. yeah, I mean, I, yeah, I have had people get emotional during the reveal session and I do feel like it's, um, you know, I don't feel like we need to be stunningly beautiful all the time. Like, absolutely, I don't feel like that. I feel like that's such an overrated um, aspect of our, yeah, of our culture on people to be beautiful all the time, like outwardly. Inward, why don't we, I think inward, if we could be inwardly beautiful all the time, that would be fantastic. Um, but I think, you know, we do need to feel that way about ourselves sometimes. And if you have this, if I have this way of, of sharing that and showing people, how beautiful they are and showing them how their loved ones see them. I think we see our, we see our family and we see our friends as very beautiful, right? Like, don't you think that all of your loved ones are so beautiful yeah. and we don't see ourselves in that way because we look at ourselves in pieces and parts and sections or whatever. And um, yeah, I guess my goal is to like, have you be able to see yourself the way that the people who love you see you? That was sort of convoluted sentence, but I hope yeah, it makes no, sense. But, yeah. No, but that yeah. makes sense. Yeah, it's right. I, I yeah. think, Alexis, one of the things as I hear you speak, the two words that, you know, come to mind right now is, you know, self and confidence, right? And sometimes we have so much um, competition um, out there with how we should look, whether, you know, we're 20 or 30 or 40 or 50 or 60 or whatever it is. And we've got some competing agendas that, that I truly believe are detrimental. And so, you know, if we're, we're supposed to look a certain way and, you know, there's a book called The Coddling of the American Mind that talks about, especially with young women and men as well, but women in particular, where all of these filters have enhanced them to the point that that's not even who they are mm -hmm. when they see themselves in image. And they've convinced themselves that when they don't see themselves with a filter or the refined, you know, fixer upper, as I call it, there's depression and challenge. And, and the book really highlights the um, crisis that we're in. So I love what you yeah. just said. Oh, yeah. And that to what you said, Mary, to those filters and all of that stuff. I mean, it started obviously with all the airbrushing and Photoshop and things yeah. that are part of my industry, which I've really struggled with because, you know, so many of my clients are like, get rid of this, get rid of that, make this different. And I, I really hesitate to to do much of that. Although, you know, of course, I, I might do little, you know, under eye dark circles and things like that. Um, because I don't want people, I don't want my subjects to just zoom in on those little right. things that don't show up in just like natural day, whatever. But that those filters are not only are they creating this like overly 
perfected um, kind of beauty, but they're also really, um, I don't know if you've noticed this about them, but they, they're making everyone look the same. Like they, they're changing your physical features, the structure of your bones and your color of your eyes. And they're sort of like homogenizing everyone. And how sad is that? Like the most beautiful thing about humans is how different we all all are. And if we can't, if we're all, you know, starting to try and look more and more the same with all, not only the filters, but then the plastic surgery or like the injections and all these things, like not that I have anything against doing those things, do what, do you, (laughs) but, but if you're doing it to change yourself, so you look like someone else, it's just like, I don't understand. I don't know. Well, there's a problem in in doing that, right? Yeah. Yeah. I I wrote an article about um, wallpapering with my son. So in short, we wallpapered uh, the youngest baby's room and there's a flaw. And rather than focusing on that flaw, you just walk in. No one else is going to see that flaw. You might know it's there or perceive it as a flaw, but no one else sees it. And I think that's really important when you're looking at, and we all do it. We look at a photo and like, oh God, I mean, don't put that, I don't like that photo. You get rid of it, right? It's like, and you focus in on what you don't like about yourself. Yeah. When no one else has even. No one else would see that. that. I just yeah. had this conversation yesterday with a client of mine who she's from Edmonton and she just visited. Um, she was coming through Canmore, so she dropped by the studio, and she told me that because she did her reveal online. Normally, I like to do it in person with prints, but since she was back in Edmonton already, we did it online, and so she had her daughter, and I think another friend there with her, which. I sometimes that makes me nervous because I want people to react in an honest way. But in, in a way, it was good because there had been I think she took a pre look at them. And there was one that she was like, oh, whatever. She wouldn't tell me what the feature was, which is great. But she's whatever feature bugged her about herself. She, she didn't like the photo because of the that feature. And then that was the photo that her daughter and her friend were like, oh, oh my God. Like they just almost oh, cried when they saw oh, it. Oh. And she was like, that's interesting. And then she showed her husband and that's, he, he went through all of them, that same one. <gasps> oh, so beautiful. And they, she, that he wanted that one printed and framed. And she said, oh, maybe I need to stop worrying about that one feature so much. Like, And I was so happy that she allowed that to happen and also allowed it to change her own thinking. Even though I know that's challenging because those things are so ingrained in our psykes. What well, is interesting is that, sorry. Sorry, go, go ahead. ahead. Okay. Well, I'm just going go back. <laughs> we just did the <laughs> You go ahead. Chrissy's Chrissy. Chrissy turn. Chrissy, um, what you were saying about like what people kind of expect out of editing. And I really like what you've done with Fiona, where you've created oh. to, like the before and after. I bring that one up quite a few times. So I'll, I'll make sure I link it into our newsletter so people can see what I'm talking about. But basically, it's a picture of a personal trainer here in the Bow Valley who, when you slide it across, it's what she actually looks like. And when you slide it back, it's like the edits that would be made for like magazine worthy photos kinds of things. And Fiona just talks about those kinds of things fairly regularly. So, and all the- Yeah, a huge shout out to Fiona for that, because again, this is not the kind of Photoshop work that I would normally do, Mm -hmm. although I do have like those technical skills. And so exercising them was like almost like ch- nails on a chalkboard to me, like in my mind, because I was like, this is so wrong what I'm doing, like changing shapes of things on her body and whatever. But she said, do the things, do like she gave me like a really specific list. Like I want this, well, this, this, because yeah. that's what they would normally do. And especially in her industry, she's in the fitness industry. It was like a body shot, you know, um, with lots of skin showing. And she wanted to talk about, you know, the just to really illustrate that we're not seeing really reality when we look at these photos and fair, it's fine, whatever. But like, just to keep that in mind, you know, when we look at ourselves in the mirror in our crap lighting (laughs) at home, not to think that that's supposed to look like what we see on, you know, advertising. Well, and to that point that I was going to say earlier, it kind of flowed perfectly. Fiona wanted, Fiona gets a lot of pressure to look like that all the time and she doesn't and and she does that because she wants to show um and, and so to the point earlier about your friend or your client that the daughter picked out the same picture the husband picked out the same picture so does that make you feel better about yourself in going oh that's what they see about me it's not like oh they don't see that it's like 
that's how they see me to your point mm -hmm. early is how mm -hmm. your, your people who love you see you. Right. Mm -hmm. And, and mm -hmm. don't always listen to what's in your head about what you think people are seeing. Mine yeah. is my smile. I hate my smile. I love it. I think we're going to see it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You talk about pictures. Yeah. Stop it. Everybody. Yeah, I know. But that's what I mean. Now I'm, I'm getting more used to saying, yeah. and so I'm, I'm more used to my smile now, but oh yeah, there's still pictures. I'm like, oh God, get rid of that one. But <laughs> it's true. And so when you're under that pressure as a Fiona would be, who is this beautiful woman and works really hard at mm -hmm. what she does in her craft, she's not perfect and she doesn't ever profess to be right yeah and what is but yeah. what is perfect like that's a conversation like what yeah. she is perfect she's got a body she's yeah. alive she's like oh yes her... of course you know but i mean I know. When we're thinking about traditional magazine perfect right i know i know yeah. that's not what you meant but i think yeah. that's such a funny thing that we do like why do we why do we think we're perfecting things by sort of smoothing them out and homogenizing them and yeah. erasing any signs of age this is the thing yeah. is like is like this obsession with youth like yeah. we're not embracing embracing the point there's many men and women that would love to be complaining about gray hair and wrinkles who didn't get to live long enough to complain right about them, right yeah. it's embracing each step along the way for sure yeah yeah i know it's it's like every time i don't say this but every time someone one of my clients because you know i really get a lot of like almost every single client who comes for a shoot it's nerve-wracking and it's like putting yourself out there and they often start by just telling me the parts of their physique that they don't like. Mm -hmm. And I, it, it kind of hurts my soul a little bit, but I'll listen because I want to make a space for them to have that vulnerability. And I want to know these things that their feelings, but I, I try and always ask them um, what you asked in your question, um, which is, okay, you've told me these things. Now tell me something that you love about the way that you look. Um, and because usually what they'll say, like, I I just started started asking that question rather than saying when they say oh I hate my arms because my brain that's like it's so harsh and I would never say this in a session is like at least you have arms yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. like like yeah. aren't we shouldn't we be grateful yeah <laughs> yeah but yeah yeah so I mean speaking of that question um you know one of the things that we've been thinking about Alexis is posing you a few questions as well and. Um, based on the work that you do and how you work with your clients, what do you love about yourself? We're just curious how, because that was a question that was posted up for everybody yeah. to kind of reflect on. I love that you asked that question. Before you answer that, just there are some people watching live. So if anybody wants to put in what they love about themselves as well, yeah, feel do free it. to put that in the comments. But yeah, yeah. Sorry, Alexis, go ahead. Yeah, so um I love that you asked that question because yeah, that's something that I find I try and bring up to like flip the script with people. And so usually when I ask it, I'm asking, what do you love about yourself as a physical attribute? Because I'm about to photograph you and I, you know, I don't want to know the negative thing. So if I had to answer that one, that I would say that I, um, I like my, I don't know. I like my eyes. Um, I like my red hair. Um, I got lucky in the gene pool on that one. Um, but if someone just asked me like in general, you know, what do you love about yourself? I, I think I wouldn't like outside of this context. I don't think I would immediately go to a physical attribute. I think that I've learned to love about myself, something that I used to really not like about myself. And it's, um, my ability to, um, make people feel good. That sounds like I mean that I didn't used to like that specifically, but I used to get teased a lot about my friends used to call me the accommodator. Yeah. And like yeah. I used to feel like, well, that makes me seem like I'm spineless and like I'm yeah. a pushover or like a, a doormat, you know, and I really didn't want to I wanted to be a powerful I wanted to come across as a powerful woman, you know, feminine strength and power has always been like so inspiring to me and that's who I wanted to be. But I'm just a super soft person. So I don't think that 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 those things are mutually exclusive. So now I've learned to love my softness. Lovely. Yeah, and you have a, a gentleness about you, but you're not a pushover. I mean, if anyone's done a so. session, you're like I've said this before, I'm my pretty friend, bossy. You're kind of bossy. Yeah. I'm super I love bossy. It. <laughs> <laughs> but that's that's a quiet way to do it. You do it in such a gentle way versus, you know, I would be like, Bleh! but you are <laughs> so kind and so gentle that yeah, I think people misread that about you. 
And I, I, I yeah. Well, and I want to take this question to all of us, ladies. Mm -hmm. What do you love about yourselves? Mm -hmm. Yeah, but we were like, who's going to go first? <laughs> oh, do you want us to answer? Oh, yeah, no, literally, I want you to answer. Oh. <laughs> and throwing up Annette uh, through an answer. She said, I love my silver hair and my teeth. Yeah, yeah. Annette's oh, a beautiful, beautiful. Woman. Yeah, beautiful soul, that girl. Hello, Annette. Um, okay, I'll go first. Uh, I hear it all the time as people meet me and they feel like they've known me their whole lives. So I think that I like about that I'm very open and very loving, even though I'm like a you know a bit loud and say swear words a lot. But I think <laughs> that uh, one of the things I like is that I I do like to include everybody and I don't care who you are, what you are, what you do for a living. If you're a nice person, I try and look for that good in everybody. That's one of the things I like. Okay, but I'm I'm gonna put you on the spot here. What would you say when Alexis is about to photograph you and she's looking for the things you love? She okay. knows. <laughs> Me, I love oh physical. Okay, well then we're gonna go into the next part. Okay, uh, I love my very curly Greek hair, and I I know I have beautiful eyes because I've been told so many times. Big brown eyes. Thanks. Yeah. Hey Mary, how about you? You know, it's interesting. You know, I. I think I love um, that I've worked on that whole notion of being really kind um, to individuals and, and sometimes it backfires. I, I love that I try to be as kind as I can to everyone, um, but sometimes it um, it works against us because some individuals um, equate kindness to weakness. Mm -hmm. And so how do you rise above that? And not just for the sake of being kind, but for the sake of being a human and respecting all for whoever they are. I mean, and um, yeah, so that's what I like about my, I really like that about myself. Who's going to call her on the uh, physical part too? What's the physical no, part, my friend? <laughs> I, 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 I've been very fortunate. Uh, my dad gave me some beautiful green eyes and I, I love my green hazel eyes and um, and I like my smile most of the time. <laughs> yeah. Well, we love it all the time. Just saying. Thank you. Yeah. Christy. Christy. <laughs> so um, physically, I was also going to say smile. And I would even say at this point, like the smile lines, like it feels like I've earned some smile lines around yeah. my eyes and my mouth. And I am okay with that. Um, these ones not so okay with, but the other ones <laughs> <laughs> eyes are not my favorite. Um, and then I think if I'm thinking about non-physical attributes, it would be energy like I have a lot of energy I find when I talk to people they're like oh my gosh you're so passionate about this you're bringing so much energy to it and that has taken me a while because it also means that I bounce around a lot and jump all over the place I don't know if you guys noticed but twice a bird hit my window while we've been recording and I was like what and my bra fell off right now like I'm <laughs> the hardest time <laughs> And I, am I moving too much? I'm not really sure, but it's like literally around my elbows right now. <laughs> oh my God. I think you might want to add that honesty and that <laughs> no filter. I love it. That's awesome. But yeah, so, I, do, I do think yeah. energy is like a big one for me. Yeah. yeah, I agree. You have wonderful energy. Yeah, I love You're your energy. You're the driving too. force behind a lot of the stuff we're doing. So. So I'm going to ask, um, so instead of a question today for me, I would like to put in a consideration for people to think about is, so when you ask someone what they like about themselves, nine times out of 10, they'll tell you something physical before they'll tell, tell you something. This was not planned. What you guys did is we talked about what we like about ourselves, but then also the physical. So I think the consideration would be is to look at yourself in a photo or go stand in the mirror if you don't have photos. And at that point, you need to go see Alexis if you don't have any <laughs> photos. But um, And really take a good, honest look at what your beauty is. Get away from the, if I'm going to talk about myself, who cares about the smile? What else is there that people are drawn to? And it's not about making other people happy. It's about 
having connection, what connects you with other people. So I think that's a good consideration. Yes, you can pick the physical. Can you change it? I mean, I could change my smile if I wanted to for only $15,000 in a broken <laughs> jaw, right? And then it's like, oh, who cares? You know, maybe I should work on not being so impatient when I'm driving, right? <laughs> Those kinds of things, right? And what it, it just brings a focus on to yourself, I think that's to consider everyone who's watched this is to consider that. What do you think? <laughs> so we'll put, that in the, we'll put that in our takeaway email for all those yes. who are getting that. So you can have a little bit of time to think about it, but um, Mary, I'll throw this over to you. Thank you. And, you know, we, in our episodes, we always want you to take something from these conversations and to implement it. Um, you don't have to report back to us, but it's called the Take Back, Bring Back. And we've been talking about this. Um, and we thought it might be interesting if each of you would select one photo, um, reflect on that photo that you've selected and think about yourself and not necessarily what you look like i mean it could be that physical attribute but what in that photo brings a smile to your face what do you love about that photo that's beautiful yeah, i can see my photo idea. already alexis i know <laughs> exactly which photo i would be i know which one you're thinking about too me too dean says, dean says did you see this photo of christy hey, can i share it for a second yes it is you. i was phenomenal. Beautiful. i'm going to take you all and courageous um, I don't know about that. Uh, she really just told me what to do. <laughs> <laughs> There's like the Lexus being bossy situation. <laughs> so, this is Alexis's Instagram. If you're not following it, please go follow her. She's got lots of posts in here, lots of videos, but this is the photo that we are talking about. Yeah. Um, yes. Um, Beautiful. I need to tell you a story about this because Alexis, this was one of the first ones she showed me and I was not expecting this. Like, <laughs> said, bring a blazer, bring a bra. This one was on actually. It wasn't around my elbows at that time. <laughs> and I did. And we like did some posing. And then when she did the reveal session, this photo was like knocked me on my ass. And then <laughs> she printed it and wrapped it. And I left it for Harrison when I was away. So it was on the bed. And he like had a chance to open it. But when I came back after the summer, I was like, Hey, uh, I haven't seen that picture yet actually printed. Like, have you, can you, can I see it? He's like, Oh, I don't know where it is. And I was appalled. Like, are you, you <laughs> we cannot find that picture. You just misplaced that picture. Well, one day I came home from work and it was framed on our counter. Aww. So he had taken it and gotten it framed and pretended he didn't know what was going on just to surprise me. So that was uh, like a moment that really stood out to me too, that he knew how much that picture would mean to me. Um, because I've done some boudoir -y type stuff in the past and this is not boudoir. Like, yeah, I no. know. that's a whole nother conversation, but I loved it. Yeah. Well, I'm so glad you did. And I'm so glad you trusted me and, and, uh, you know, let me, let me, you know, make you, even though you came for like business work related photos, I was like, let's also do this thing though. <laughs> I love that. And, yeah. and you know, it's interesting. Um, if, if I may, that whole level of confidence again, Christy and bravery or whatever the words are. Um, I had very fortunate and spent some time in Europe on some beaches just this past summer. And let me tell you, I sure learned a lot about myself when I observed others wearing uh, very minimal attire on the beach, whether that we were, I, I'm going to say, fit and young or um, elderly or not. And the confidence that everybody mm -hmm. that I witnessed, I kind of went, I need to learn some of this. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. um, and it goes back to your first conversation this afternoon about the beauty within us and that we are beautiful. And so I'm, you know, and that all I'm learning. Stages. Yeah. yeah, we there, you know, so many times people say, well, before my shoot, I just need to lose 10 pounds or I just need to do this. or And I'm just like, no, you don't. You're beautiful yeah. right now. Like, great if you want to go and get healthy and do things that are good for your body. That's yeah. awesome. But as far as the way that you look and, and the way that I'm going to photograph you, come to me on any day, at any stage of your life because you're beautiful. Like, yeah. we, we just, yeah, we need to get away from that whole envelope being the same as everybody else's envelope and uh and also no one yeah just no one sees you you the way that you yeah 
Yeah. And young girls in particular, young girls who yeah. were so confident in who they, I thought, I love you for who you are, but you've also taught me a lot about who I need to become. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Our, I think our culture, like it has shifted a lot since maybe we were all young or that yeah. age or, or whatever, or maybe it's just like, I don't know if it's just the time or whatever, but I don't, I feel like I look back and I just like was so hard on myself. And I think we were seeing a lot of the imagery that well, those of us maybe over 40 or whatever were consuming was just so unhealthy. And um, yeah, our culture was not teaching us to, our culture was teaching us like, here are all the ways you can make yourself look better, but they, it didn't teach you how to like be confident and enjoy the way that you look right now. And that's starting to like, come into more mainstream culture is like, wait, here, here are ways that you can enjoy what you look like right now. And so on the heels of that, um, uh, I want you guys who's listening, whoever's watching, listening is the details in our takeaway email is about Alexis McKeown. And if you want to book a session with Alexis, it's alexismckeown.com. So it's M-C-K-E-O-W-N.com. Correct, McKeown. It's not. Yeah, McKeown. thanks for saying it. <laughs> yeah. I listen. Um, yeah, so it it's well worth a session to be with this beautiful human being who makes you feel beautiful. And she's so. She, yeah. Go ahead. Sorry, she's, she's so lovely, so she lovely. Really in is. fact, that her husband oh. thinks she's lovely <laughs> as well. And if you know, and I'm this is just me, and I need to thank you, your husband for the amazing, lovely ice cream that is homemade, beautiful <laughs> product when you're in Canmore. So if you have not been to Canmore to have the lovely ice cream, put it on your list. Yeah, oh, it shout is. Out, shout so out, so lovely. Yeah. <laughs> and just a yeah. call out to wait, like go check out Alexis's site. Instagram will take you over there, but also um, sign up for her newsletter because she sends them out a few times a year. It's not like constant, which I can appreciate. It's like, it's like max four because yeah. that's how organized I am. Yeah. But it also <laughs> means that sometimes you'll put in like, hey, I'm doing a simplicity session and it's this much yeah. off. So if you are thinking about photos and sometimes you just need another push, um, sometimes there's a discount that you can do. So definitely sign up for Alexis's um, her newsletter and that's right through her website that you can do that. Um, and then... Thank you, Alexis. Just Thank talk you so much. Next time we have our next episode on October 19th, Mary's going to be talking about her work with Lift Leadership. Mary, do you want to talk about that for a second? Sure, just really quickly, Lift Leadership, and you don't need to be in any formal leadership positions, but Lift Leadership is um, getting us to think about how do we lift ourselves, and it kind of ties in beautifully to what we've been talking about today, and others from where we stand. And it doesn't need to be a professional, it can be professional and, pers and or personal, but how, how do we take care of ourselves? How do we lift each other up so that um, together, we're more buoyant. We're more more um, together, um, and we float better when we're we're buoyant and lift each other up. So that's what we're talking about. Mary, do you still have space in your course for that? I do have space. Yeah, it's um, filling up fairly quickly. Um, registration is open until October the tenth, and that is in person in Edmonton. Generally, educational leaders. Um, educational leaders, um, and we've got some business partners that are joining us, and we'll be reflecting on the notion of um, self-reflection. How do we lift ourselves and others? What is the research saying about lift leadership? And how do we collect data and or evidence that we are becoming lift leaders for each other and ourselves? Can you, we'll, we'll send that in the takeaway email. I'd like to send Absolutely. that out to people too, in case they're interested or they know somebody that might be interested. Because mm -hmm. I did Mary's leadership work when I was teaching at Edmonton and it was, I mean, look where we are now because I appreciated it so much. So let's sign off. <laughs> Alexis, this was awesome. Thank you so much for coming on. Thank you so much for having me. It's just been an absolute pleasure. We'll see you in Canmore. <laughs> Bye-bye. More margaritas. Oh, I guess we shouldn't talk about that.